Hello my favorite science squad and welcome to today's video. Printers. They help us to get the most important cultural achievements onto a piece of paper. This might include the Declaration of Independence, literature from Shakespeare or my high school philosophy essays. No, they are not as revolutionary as I initially thought. But printers can do a lot more. Our story today starts in 2001. Luke Masella is a 10-year-old child who suffers from spina bifida. This disease is severe as it causes a gap in his spine. He already had to undergo dozens of surgeries, but his condition did not improve, instead it got worse. His bladder was malfunctioning, which led his kidneys to fail. In order to save the child's life, his doctor, called Anthony Attella, planned something unprecedented. He printed a bladder in the laboratory and transplanted it into the child. And this bioprinted bladder is still intact today. My name is Kevin Steinig and today we talk about 3D bioprinting and how we might be able to make new organs. Three-dimensional or 3D bioprinting involves techniques where we try to make tissues or organs. We've already covered a similar topic where we discussed organoids, but today we will focus on bioprinters and bioprinters only. So in 3D bioprinting, we use a printer in order to apply cells layer by layer until we have made a structure. So we can compare bioprinters to commercially available printers, but instead of making a phone stand, we try to make organs. So in order to keep this video entertaining, I thought we now try to imagine being the scientists ourselves. And of course, we are very humble scientists. So let's say we want to print a heart. We are heart experts today and we know that many people are in need of a form of intervention as they have dysfunctional hearts. Every year more than 80,000 heart valve replacements and over 600,000 vascular implantations are performed in the United States alone. Moreover, over 3,500 people in the US are currently waiting for a heart transplant. For these patients, every minute counts. So let's go on a journey and see how we might be able to print out a human heart. There are three steps until we successfully have made a human heart for bioprinting. The first step is to know how our heart should look like. In other words, we need to create a three-dimensional model which we can use as a blueprint. So we now invite our patient to our laboratory and take many images of his or her heart. Of course, we don't want to cut open our patient to make images, but instead we can use non-invasive approaches. And that includes, for example, magnetic resonance imaging. And after we've collected enough images, we can just start to make a 3D model. Now that we've done that, we come to the second step, which is the bioprinting process. Here we need two things. Can you maybe guess them? Yeah, we need a printer and we need bio ink. Let's first talk about bioprinters. There are different bioprinters currently under development. They are inject based printers, which are more slow, but we can really decide what we want to print on a two dimensional space. Moreover, there are laser based printers, which are suitable for making three dimensional structures, but the produced organs are mostly quite tiny. And then there are extrusion based lasers which help us to make bigger organs but we cannot really control how finer structures will look like. So you see in reality the different types of printers have their advantages and disadvantages but for now let's say we have the perfect printer. The second thing we need is bio ink. Bio ink contains a custom formulation of biomaterials, additives, growth factors, hormones and cells. Okay, so far so good, but you might now wonder, wait, we need cells, so where do they come from? Here it becomes a bit tricky, but also awesome. A heart, of course, contains of many different types of cells. There are muscle cells, nerve cells, epithelial cells, and we need all of them in order to make our organ. And the question is, how should we do that? And by now you should know me, it's quite straightforward with me. The answer is always stem cells. Stem cells are special types of cells which can make different types of cells of our bodies. 
In the early embryo, we can find stem cells which are pluripotent and that means that they can make all the different types of cells we need in order to print a heart. So we could use embryonic stem cells, but of course we do not want to do that. We do not want embryonic bioink. that's not ethical. So why not instead make the pluripotent stem cells ourselves? We've already covered in great detail how we can make stem cells from skin cells, but in principle we just introduce factors into the cells in order to convert them over time into stem cells. The great thing now here is that we can harvest the skin cells from the patient and convert them in the laboratory into our stem cells. And then of course we can use them to make the different cells which are needed for printing. Phew, complicated. And this approach using the patient cells in order to make the transplant has the main advantage that we are not in great risk of having our transplant being rejected in the end. Okay, so now we have our model for printing, we have the printer and we have the bioink. We apply cells layer by layer onto a so-called scaffold and a scaffold helps us to create the overall structure of our heart. After we are finished, we come to the third step where we assess the quality of the transplant and put it into a bioreactor. Here the cells are allowed to grow and we have a transplant ready for surgery. And now I have a surprise for you. You might think that we just found a new way to create hearts and therefore we are the most creative and handsome scientists. Well, to that I answer, of course you are the most creative and handsome people on this planet. But not to disappoint you, but a heart has already been printed. So you wanna see it? There you go. Well, it's a bit tiny, but here we are, that's reality. It is very difficult to implement three-dimensional bioprinting, yet alone growing organs. There are several issues which we have to address until we can grow full-fetched organs. Firstly, we need to refine the whole bioprinting process as it's very time consuming. It takes a lot of time to make stem cells and then to convert them into the different types of cells and then to print them in the end. We also need a yet not established bioprinter which can print all the different types of cells to grow the whole organ. In other words, we need a very fast but very precise bioprinter. And only then we will be able to grow transplants to their original sizes. And then the next thing every scientist knows when he or she works with complicated cells, we need to focus on cell viability. You see, being printed is very stressful for cells. Cells might experience heat or pressure during the printing and then they need to adapt to the new environment. And in that process, some cells can die. If we want to make transplants, we need to keep as many cells happy as possible. And that means, for example, that we really need to establish which additives are important in bioinks. And especially for bigger organs, this also means that our cells need enough oxygen. You see, in very tiny structures such as a two-dimensional layer of cells, oxygen just can enter each cell. But if our structures become larger and larger, then there's a certain point where cells in the middle do not get enough oxygen anymore. And in the long run, it means that the cells will die. So the only way to compensate for that is to establish also vessels in our organs. There are some protocols for making vessels, but we need more research on the topic. Okay, you might now say, ha, ha, yeah, Clemens, I know, science can be difficult, but what has been achieved so far? Although it is still a long way until we can grow full-fetched organs, there have been first successes in making smaller tissues. Remember, for example, the success story in the beginning of this video where we discussed a bladder which has been printed. Moreover, in 2019, a research team from Yale University made skin crafts which contained vessels. The grafts were then transplanted into mice and, remarkably, the vessels of the grafts connected with the surrounding tissue. And also in 2013, an infant who suffered from a severe disorder received a 3D printed trochea splint. So it is still a long way to go, but you can see there are already some first successes. But until then, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and if so, feel free to leave a like and comment which other topic I should cover. And if you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the latest discoveries in life sciences. 
And with that, I'll see ya. If you're interested in another method for which we can grow brain-like structures, click on this video here. If you want to know more how we can make stem cells in the laboratory, click on the video on the right.